Right, hello honors 410 if all goes as planned this is going to be one of my shortest video lectures first off for those who are watching early just a reminder the critical essay assignment is due today tuesday by 11 a.m um, i've seen some of them have already come in i'm recording this a little bit in advance so i appreciate those who have clearly been working ahead i uh, look forward to reading those my intention is to get scores and feedback to students uh no later than a week from today or, or i should say no longer than a week from receipt of the assignment so if you get it in late you might get your feedback and score a little bit later um but i usually try to do a fair bit quicker for these summer courses Courses where I know everything moves at a pretty quick pace. Um, but so I tend to grade and provide feedback on a rolling basis. So some of you might have uh, scores and feedback notes as soon as tomorrow. For some of you, it might be closer to the full week. So rest assured, if you're talking to someone else in class and they've already gotten their grade um, and you're wondering about yours, that's just how it kind of rolled out um, as I work my way through all of the papers. So look forward to seeing all of those. Um, but today's class was intended to be um, a relatively light, kind of easier day, for lack of a better way of saying it. Um, so there wasn't a, you know, a reading assignment in the traditional sense, but rather this viewing assignment. Um, and again, I'm going to try to keep this a relatively short video lecture. There's no communal writing project assignments due today. Group-led videos are done. Um, this is kind of a, a bit of a moment to breathe before we transition into workshop mode. But so for today's class, I asked you all to watch Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, and I posted the video in our previous class. So if you haven't watched it yet, feel free to, you know, press pause and go back and watch that. Those posted in the Monday class discussion. Um, but if you have, I, I just have a few open-ended questions I'm going to pose here. Um, I'm not going to drill so much into specific scenes or details, though I welcome you to in your discussion. I'll try to respond to some of those comments if there are questions or things we, we should discuss a little bit further. Um, but first off, I guess the, the big question I wanted to ask was just, what this piece ultimately says to you about the nature of heroes and villains. Um, in fact, this is an especially kind of poignant or uh, relevant question nowadays. Uh, superhero culture has become such a big thing. Um, when this was produced, when this was released, uh, we'd seen the beginnings of that. Um, I, I'm a little fuzzy on my Marvel timeline, so I'm, I'm not going to try to line it up precisely, but we weren't far away from all the movies that led up to the Avengers. We weren't far away from um, you know, the, the Dark Knight series, things along those lines. For those who are into those sorts of films, you'll, you'll know the ones I'm talking about. And, e and even if you're not into those sorts of films, I expect they've, they've kind of permeated the culture enough you probably have some idea what I'm talking about. But this was sort of on, on the front end of that, that superhero boom, so to speak. Um, and I think part of what's interesting to me, and this is ground that a lot of these other films and TV shows have explored since then, but nonetheless are some interesting things to say about heroes and villains. Cause like we, we can go into watching this and it's clearly, pretty clearly set up um, who our villain is, who our hero is. Um, Dr. Horrible, he, he says explicitly that he is evil, that he wants to be a villain in the evil league that, that um, Bad Horse runs. Um, Captain Hammer is a superhero, right? Um, but I would suggest most of us, as we continue watching this, as we, as we finish up and reflect on our experience, probably weren't rooting for Nathan Fillion in that Captain Hammer role. Um, maybe maybe you weren't explicitly rooting for, but nonetheless felt at least some sympathy for Neil Patrick Harris's character, um, Dr. Horrible, the, the title character of this whole situation. Um, per perhaps um, the, the, uh, our female protagonist is the one we feel most compassion for, is sort of being just caught in the middle of all of this. But in any event, um, wh what do we walk away thinking about heroes and villains, kind of how they're represented, who, who they actually are, so on and so forth? Um, I'm curious about reactions to the impact of music here. Um, this was a relatively low-budget uh, presentation. It was filmed during a writer's strike when, when network TV was kind of closed down for all intents and purposes um, on sort of a shoestring budget uh, of people kind of, you know, choosing to work together. If everyone had asked for their full, you know, usual line of payment for these kinds of projects, it probably never would have happened. Um, but Joss Whedon, um, who has become kind of a controversial figure, I don't, I don't want to completely skirt that, um, but he was the person who kind of masterminded the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV series and Angel and Firefly and Dollhouse. Um, and he had some involvement um, with the, the first Avengers movies and, and Cabin in the Woods and a bunch of other stuff. Um, you know, he was sort of the mastermind of this project, worked with his uh, brother on it. 
and um, you know, and obviously there, there's some familiar faces in the cast as well. Um, but one thing I would just separate this from those other superhero projects is the music, right? Um, because it's, you know, it's a 40 minute or so uh, presentation and a lot of it is music, right? A lot of it is breaking the song. Um, this could be essentially staged as a musical. I think it's, it's really kind of framed as such. Um, what, what's the impact of the music? How does that affect us? How did that affect our viewing experience? Um, what, what, what do you think of it? Not so much do you like the music or not, although, you know, feel free to go there if you like, but more, um, you know, how did that enhance the presentation or perhaps even take away from it if, if you're of that mind? Um, I'm curious that this might tie into some of the earlier discussion, both about heroes and villains and about music, but emotionally how you feel coming out of this. Um, because I think I'll show my hand here a little bit and sort of answer the question from my perspective that part of why I appreciate and kind of enjoy um, Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog so much is because of the sort of conflicted emotions that, that it brings up for me. The fact that um, I think it's really funny. I think there's a lot of moments where even having watched it, you know, a good, you know, dozen, maybe 20 times at this point, I still laugh at, at certain parts of it. I find them so, so humorous. But at the same time, it's also really sad. And I think that by the end of it, um, you know, it's hard not to feel a little bit down after watching this, right? But I'm curious as to all of your emotional reactions um, and, and how it kind of provoked those emotions for you. Um, and then otherwise, you know, like, like for all of the readings, everything we've watched here, um, kind of open-ended, I'd like to ask just in general, what, what grabbed your attention here? What interested you? Um, what, what else did you kind of notice here that I haven't explicitly asked about, but nonetheless might be worth us all discussing? Um, okay, th thanks as always for watching. I promised I would keep it short. We're under seven minutes. I'm going to try to keep it that way. Uh, thanks, everyone, and I'll catch you next time.